Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in this Unity 2D short series. So this is basically just going to be a, a pretty short series where I'm going to show you how to use the new features introduced in Unity 4.3. So here we have it, 4.3 new 2D tools and they are great. So go to unity3d.com under the download section and make sure you have at least 4.3 downloaded and installed. Uh, the type we, uh, of game we're going to be making is a Pong type game and um, it's just old school Pong but with updated graphics and I'm going to walk you through the whole process but I've also made a um, 2D pack, an assets pack which you can download from the brackies.com website and uh, from there you get all kinds of different cool things to use in many different categories of 2D games. So first off we have the, the Pong game here. This is basically what we are going to be making. Um, at least somewhat it should look like this at the end. And uh, for that I also have the full Photoshop file where you have all the different layers named correctly, different parameters you can tweak. You get everything um, fully customizable and all of the different individual sprites exported as PNG files and ready for importing. Uh, then I also have the uh, platformer um, temple here, if you want to make like a 2D side-scrolling platformer. Uh, and I also have a speed add of that coming up. So when it's going to be done, I don't know yet, but it's definitely on its way. And for that is the Photoshop and the sprites also. Then the top-down arcade type game, and this is some pixel art also. And then we have some tower defense, where you can plant towers and make up your own enemies and, and such. So you have uh, quite a few things to play around with here, uh, and all of this should get you started. And then we have a various folder, which now only includes a coin, but it, there will probably get more in there and if you make something cool and want to share it with the world please write to me and I might include it in the assets pack. Great so now let's get started with today's lesson. Um, so let's start up Unity and uh, yeah get going with this tutorial. So let's open up Unity and uh, a cool little trick is whenever you open up Unity and don't want it to load up the project but instead want it to open this wizard so you can open another one or create a new project then you simply open up Unity and right after you've clicked it then hold down Alt and it needs to be right after uh, and then this wizard should pop up. That's just really annoying when you have to load up a whole project and then open up another so that's a great little trick. Now let's go under create new project. Let's browse for our, from our Dropbox folder here, add a new subfolder and let's call this Pong and select folder. So Dropbox Pong, that's perfect. We are not going to import any uh, packages but we are going to set the defaults for 2D games and this is really important. You either need to do this right now while making the project but you can also do it later and I'll show you in a sec how to do that. So let's hit create and it will open up a an empty Unity project set up for the new 2D tools. Uh, again if you've already made something and want to adjust it to the new 2D stuff so uh, then you can just go to edit, project settings and then editor and then the default behavior mode needs to be 2D. <clears throat> Great, so now that we have set up uh, our projects, we can go to the scene view and see that this looks all kinds of weird. Uh, we can see that this is now a two-dimensional grid and you can go up here at the top of the scene view and go back to three view, so disable the 2D view and then switch back again. So it's a very seamless workflow from 3D to 2D. Okay, so let's go ahead and import our first sprite. A sprite is basically a texture. I know there's a difference, but it's not that important. Um, so let's go under the individual sprites under our Pong 2D assets pack. And let's just drag in the background. We're going to adjust that first. And so just drag it in and it's now imported. 
And because we have selected 2D as our defaults, you can see a new texture type has been selected called a sprite. And under here we get all kinds of different uh, settings. The first off is the sprite mode. We want that to be single because there's only one uh, object or sprite we want to show inside of this image. Sometimes you have a whole sprite sheet is what it's called, where you have all kinds of objects in one, uh, one single image. Uh, but right now it's single. The packing tag, just ignore that for now. Pixels to units, that's important if you import something and think way this, this is way too small or way too large, then you can change the pixels to units. So making this smaller will make it appear larger and the other way around. The pivot, we want that to be centered for our background. That means that it will be centered, our anchor point will be centered in the middle of the uh, picture. And uh, the filter mode should be bilinear. The max size, I want to bump that up to 2048. Um, and that's because um, this is a really high resolution image. But if you are making something like a web player game where you don't have that much resource to go with, I would go ahead and bump it down a bit. You can easily do that. And the format, just leave it at compressed, even though it says it won't. Uh, that's because it's not made in the power of two and that's a longer dis di discussion. So let's just ignore this and hit apply. Great, so now we can simply drag it into the scene view and you will see it appear and we can drag it around and it works just right. So let's just center our X and our Y and the Z should already be centered. If not, make it zero. Generally, you want to work with your images in... Um, you know, with a Z directional axis of zero, um, unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, beforehand, we used to sometimes sort images using the Z axis, but Unity has made a new great uh, way to do this called sorting layers, and we're going to look at them in a sec. First off, you see this new component called Sprite Renderer. This is where we can select the sprite, also tinted in different colors. And the cool thing about this color tint is it's no longer... Uh, connected to the material so you can do it for individual objects and not have to create a new material every time. Now to the sorting layer. So basically there are two things you need to remember for a sorting layer. Uh, the first off is the sorting layer itself. That's basically a group. Uh, so there, that could be a background uh, sorting layer, a middle and a foreground sorting layer. You could also split it up into enemies, players. Um, but generally you have like a background and a foreground and and then maybe some uh, some more to split it up and then there's the order in layer and basically the higher this is uh, the more on top it's going to get drawn so if this is uh, higher than all of the other objects it's going to get drawn on top and this is basically a way to sort um, different objects inside the same layer so let's go to the sorting layer hit add sorting layer and hit plus and let's change this to background and because we want this to get drawn beneath the default layer we're going to drag it above it that's not really logic to me but that's how the unity guys set it up there might be some really interesting research and it's might it might be logic to you but yeah uh, things that needs to be in the background needs to be on top so we'll just do that Go back, select the BG here and go and select our new background sorting layer. And the ordering layer, let's just, that it would be fine to just set it at zero for now because we only have one thing in the background layer. But I want what I want to do is I want to set this to something like, whoops, to something like minus 10. And that's because we might have different um, background layers or objects in the background layer. Uh, but I want this to be ultimately on the button. This should be drawn after everything else, meaning that we can simply just push it back a whole lot so we don't have to worry about it overlapping. And where, where did that sprite go? Oh, it's beneath the background. We're not going to get any of that. One thing that can be extremely annoying whenever you are working with sprites in the foreground and have a large background um is that whenever you need to select it or drag it, uh, something in the foreground, you sometimes get to select the background instead and oh no, now it's all, uh, out of place and, and it, can, it can be really frustrating. So Unity of course made something great we can use to take care of this problem. 
that is the layer here. So select the layer, not the sorting layer, the normal layer. Hit add layer. Let's call this, we can just do background. You can call it something more specific if you want. And then select our BG layer again and select the background layer there. And uh, right now you can see it's still not locked. So we need to make sure that everything under the background layer is locked. To do this, we go up to layers above the inspector and we can go down here under the background and we can actually see it is locked, but you can disable it and enable it here. So this basically means once you have something selected, you can still change it. But if we deselect it, we can't select it again. We can do anything, but we won will never select our background unless we go over to the hierarchy and select it there. And then you can make changes. So that's really awesome if you want to work much in the scene view and, and don't want to select wrong things. Now let's set up our main camera. So basically what I like to do is I like to rename this to main camera in one word. And also, you can see here, this box is what will get rendered. And uh, you might think, let's just drag this out so it just fits the background perfectly. But that's not always a good idea, because you're probably going to be publishing your game to many different kinds of platforms. And therefore, you're going to have many different screen sizes and resolutions. And not only are they going to vary in size, but then they're also going to change in the aspect ratio. So some might be really long and some might be really tall. And so you really need some space here um, so, that, so that if you have something really long, this won't stretch out and you will get these blue ugly lines. So we might just drag it up just a tad, but watch out you don't go overboard. And if you want to check this, we can simply go to the game view and just drag this out to make a new window for it like this to undock it. And then we can just play around with the screen size and see we can go really, really long before the blue starts appearing. And what we can do uh, even more than this is we can make sure the background is not an, um, a, a color that you notice this much. So we can change it from blue to something else. So go to the background color on the camera, go to the color picker, and now we can go over here and select something more neutral, a neutral grayish color, and then just fine tune it yourself until you get something you like. And I think this looks just perfect. So let's just drag that back. The game view here, let's just drag that into position. And now our main camera has been set up. Great. So this uh, lesson is already coming to a close. Let's just quickly import our player. So go to our individual sprites under the 2D assets pack and drag it into the project panel. Select it in the project panel. Make sure the pixels to units match so that this won't be huge and the other thing will be really small and all of the other settings are just fine. So now we can simply drag it on there and we can see it working because it's automatically under the default sorting layer so it will get drawn on top and we can press F to focus on it and see that we have some nice shadowing which I made in Photoshop and this looks just right we can move it just a bit out to the side here and see that it now looks just like in Pong. So of course we're going to be building more onto this we're going to be making some cool functionality I mean right now the game isn't exactly exciting and uh, and it's going to be really awesome. I'm looking forward to it. And again, if you want to um, get your some of your designs in the assets pack and contribute to this project, uh, then please write to me on Twitter at Bracky's Tweet. There will be something on the screen right now indicating that it's Bracky's Tweet. And uh, yeah, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.